This video is brought to you by Skillshare. For two months free, follow the link down in the description. Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Mobox Graphics and we're back with another video. This time we're gonna be covering this extremely popular look, which is kind of the text revealing the background layer. Um, I don't really know what it's called, but I'm sure it was very popular in the 80s because um, it was used often. And now we have all of these shows taking place in the 80s, such as Stranger Things. To do this, it's really simple. It's a really easy things, just built in After Effects that um, you could just adjust. And as always, this project file is available on our Patreon account. So let's just go ahead and just jump in After Effects and I'll show you what I mean. So here we are in After Effects and I'm gonna drag my two clips in. I have this um, sunset clip, which um, is basically this drone just flying um, kind of towards the sun. And you definitely want a clip that has some, some motion in the forward and back. I, I don't know what that's called with a camera, but I did see a meme going around on Twitter. So I, I don't want to say pan um, forward because I don't think that that's what it's called. And then the second one is my logo. So I'm just going to drag these in to my project panel. And I'm going to go to composition, new composition, 1920 by 1080, 23.976 is good in 20 seconds. So by going to 23.976, one, I'm gonna get more of a film look, but secondly, um, my clip is 29.9 or something uh, frames per second or 30 FPS. And um, if I interpret it down to 23, I'll get a little bit of extra time out of my clip, which is nice. So I'm just gonna drag my clip in here. And if I right click the clip and I go to interpret footage main, I'm gonna change this to the 23.976 um, and hit okay. And basically what that did was it gave me a time stretched clip. So it added almost four seconds to my clip, which is nice. Okay, great. So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add my logo and I'm gonna add a fill. I'm going to change that fill color to white. Let's see. Next up, I'm going to add a layer, a new solid, and I'm going to make it black and hit OK and drag it underneath my logo. And you'll see here there's something called track map. If I select this none and go down to Luma inverted, basically what I'm telling this black layer, look at the layer above it and anything that's white, cut it out. If I do inverted, it will do the exact opposite. So I definitely want to cut it out this way. And now I'm going to just duplicate this logo layer, make it visible, and then parent the bottom one to it. And create a layer new null object and parent this top logo to that one. Let me show you when I hit S on the keyboard and zoom this in, it zooms perfectly right into the center of this B, which is fine. Like it's nice. It's convenient that it does that, but not all logos will do that. So for example, if you look at our example one, if we zoomed in right into the center, the center would actually have been right here. So I move the center point over. I could move the anchor point of this, of this end, which I guess I will. Let me just delete that. And I could press Y on the keyboard and just drag this over by hit by holding shift and it goes straight across. I could do it like this. Um, the null, sometimes I just like to have nulls because it like keeps my like sanity in check. But I'm just going to try to get this as close to the center as humanly possible. And I think that that's like pretty close. So next up, I am going to start adding some keyframes. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard, set a keyframe, P on the keyboard, set a keyframe, and T on the keyboard, set a keyframe, and hit U on my keyboard to see all keyframes. So I have a position scale and opacity keyframe. And, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale this, scale this down a bit. And you notice like since my anchor point moved, like this isn't going to be in the comp in the center of the composition anymore. So that's kind of a pain um, if I'm being honest, but I think anchor points that's, that would have helped with the anchor points, but adding these grids certainly um, helps. And then I'm going to go up maybe like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, maybe up to like 12 seconds. And I'm going to scale this up heavily and I'm going to move it to the center of the composition. And now I'm just going to like kind of scale it down until it's perfectly um, out. You'll notice that I'm getting some like rasterization here. Luckily, this is a vector logo. So if I toggle on this continuously rasterize um, button, it will clean up those edges. But if you have a logo that's a PNG logo, it better be high resolution because you're going to be zooming in pretty far. So that's what we have. 
And also at this point, I'm gonna lower the transparency to 100, or I'm sorry, to zero. And I am going to kind of take this keyframe for transparency and pull them in. Now let's just pause the tutorial here for a minute to have a word from our sponsor. This video was brought to you by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, animation, 3D modeling, business, and more. Skillshare is the perfect place to learn from creators you already love, like this one on character animations by Jake in Motion. Premium membership is more affordable than the other platforms and gives you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are right for you. Whether you want to boost your creativity or even career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Join the more than 7 million creators learning on Skillshare. The first 500 people to sign up using the link down in the description will receive a two-month free trial. Thanks for Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Let's get back to the tutorial. Okay, so we kind of have our main animation there. I'm just going to actually scale this down even more. And again, pulling up my proportional grids, I can kind of center it up where I think that's about centered. Doesn't have to be perfect. Of course, if you were doing a title sequence for a TV show, you would make it perfect, but uh, this isn't. And I also noticed that it seems to kind of disappear on that side before this side. So I might, um, if I hit K on the keyboard, I might move my logo over just a bit. That's about right. Okay, so I have this tool by Mount MoGraph here. This is the third version. Um, I have the second one here also. The third one has a few bugs. I'm gonna do a review on it in a giveaway. Um, he hooked me up with a bunch of codes, but I'm gonna be using the tool here to create a curve that looks something like that. If you're using the graph editor, just make your curve look like that. So I think that that looks pretty cool, if not a little bit slow. So I can select all of them and hold alt and just pull this in a bit. And I think we need to tr have more transparency a little bit sooner. And I, again, kind of want something, I think I want my curve to look more like this actually. Yeah, I think that that looks cool. Now we're gonna add some kind of stylization to this, which is always critical. One of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a curves adjustment to my bottom layer, as well as a tint. So I'm just gonna to go to the end so I can actually see my clip. And uh, add a slight S curve to this, very, very minor S curve to this. And for the tint, mapping black to black is fine, but I'm gonna map white to like, a green blue, just hit okay. And since my clip actually only needs to become visible about here, I'm gonna drag it over. Maybe I could even, you know, move this, all this stuff over so I can get the full capacity of the clip. And since my clip ends here, I pretty much have to end my composition here. So I'm just gonna hit N on the keyboard and right click and trim comp to work area. So one thing that I would like to do is have either this text turn into that green color or just make the text that green color to begin with. So I'm gonna add a fill. Actually, I think this one already has a fill on it. Yep, it already has a fill on it. If I hold alt and select that color box and then I select my clip down here, I can grab this fill expression and tie it to that green color. So now it will be that green color. And as it zooms in, you'll kind of get that green color. And maybe I want this background to, you know, transition to its normal color. So I'm gonna hit the amount to tint on my bottom clip layer and move up and shift this down to like zero. Hit you on the keyboard. Um, I'm probably gonna want this to happen like over a longer period. One thing about this, this doesn't really look green enough, so I'm gonna add an HLS color balance to this as well. Maybe make it a little bit greener. 
That shouldn't affect my tint because my tint is below. But what's great about this now is that I could change the color of this tint and it will change it across the board. So if I want a color like this, it will change my text color, which is nice. And you notice that having the clip kind of travel forward um, also does help with the entire animation. The goal is to kind of get the, the, the logo and the clip to kind of go at the same speed. I think the clip's a little slow, but that's fine. The last thing I can do if I'm gonna go crazy is I could add an adjustment layer to this. And on this adjustment layer, I could add a transform. My friend Erica Anderson on Twitter, I think it's Erica of Anderson on Twitter and uh, Instagram, she kind of put me onto this using this transform effect. Um, but if I hold alt and select position, she's got like a very, very high tech way of, of making kind of this filmic look. But um, I'm just gonna do one little small, small piece of it. So I'm gonna add a wiggle expression to the position. And by the way, the way you get to expressions if you're new, if you hold alt and click the stopwatch, that's how you get to access the, the expressions. So I'm gonna wiggle 15 comma one, and that'll give it like a nice little wiggle. I think it makes that back clip look cool, but I do want a little bit more glow around the front. Yeah, I think that looks fine. Nothing crazy. And then add a noise. Set this to maybe 10. So I'm now going to take this adjustment layer and hit T on the keyboard and just kind of reduce the transparency over time. Because the final clip we might not want any of these stylized effects on. You do get like some weirdness going on like right here, but I don't really hate it. It's just kind of just different. So there you have it. Pretty simple stuff. Um, if you want to reverse this, you can. Um, those are obviously two different ways to do it. Um, I'm gonna drag my comp two, which is my tutorial comp into a new composition and just right click and go to time, time reverse layer. And this is what it would look like reversed. I happen to like when it's backwards. Let me know in the comments down below which way you like it best. Other than that, I mean, I've got really nothing else for you. So if you enjoyed this video, Give it a like, subscribe. As always, this project file is available on our Patreon account at the $5 level. So go over there and check it out and download all of our old project files as well. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.